In this recording, we will be looking at the various ways of searching for availability within SmartPoint. Searching for our availability is easy when using Travelport SmartPoint. It is possible to search for availability using standard Galileo entries, calendar search, or the air availability fill-in format from the search option in the toolbar. These last two options can also be accessed via the quick commands option by clicking on the hash icon to the right of the screen. You can then type in the letter A for example and a list of all subjects beginning with the letter A will appear. SmartPoint's availability responses come from the direct carrier link and automatically populate the availability screen with last seat availability for over 300 participating airlines. It is not necessary to access the carrier inside link display to validate last seat availability before selling. However, this can still be done if you wish to display a specific carrier. SmartPoint shows all classes of service offered in a single expanded display so there is no need to remember complicated follow-up entries. Let's take a closer look at an availability response. We'll look from London to Sydney and investigate what the highlighted areas indicate. One of the major benefits of using SmartPoint is that it greatly reduces the number of keystrokes required for making bookings and because items are clickable, what can sometimes be lengthy and complicated follow-up entries are now no longer required. Anything white is static information with no interactive capability. In this instance, you can see that after the destination, there is a number. This indicates that the flight arrives one day after the initial departure day. The two would indicate that the arrival is two days later. This is also indicated by the star or hash symbol between the departure and arrival times. Hash meaning final flight arrives one day after original departure the star two days after original departure. When we hover the mouse over blue font items, this performs decode. You can also click to expand. The first decodable item is airport. When you hover the mouse over the airport code, you can see the city. By clicking on it, you can see the airport name. A one between the departure and arrival points would indicate that the flight stops somewhere. For more information, click on the 1. You are now able to see where the flight stops, as well as the flying time between each of the departure and arrival points. Hovering the mouse over or clicking on the carrier code allows you to decode this. Hovering the mouse over or clicking on the flight number will give you terminal information and total elapsed flying time. When flights have the at symbol in front of them, this indicates that the flight is a code share. By hovering the mouse over the symbol, you can see which airline will be operating the flight. Hovering the mouse over the equipment code will tell you the aircraft type. Dates and number of passengers can be changed after initial availability is performed via the Availability Modifier toolbar. This allows for quick access to the same availability request for the prior or following day. You can also select the number of passengers prior to selling the seat. Up to nine can be selected. To minimise or expand this, click on the calendar icon to the right. The More Flights link returns more air availability. Alt and M can also be entered if you prefer using keyboard entries. Please note that clicking on the More Flight link does not remove the original 16 flight options. Scrolling up and down will view all availability options that have been displayed. Let's take a look at another availability display, this time from Karachi to Delhi. Seat availability is also colour coded to enable easier distinction between available seats shown here in green, waitlist closed shown here in grey, 
It is also possible to waitlist classes with a zero indicator. Seats on request or available to waitlist are shown in orange. SmartPoint enables you to search for outbound and return flights in a single transaction. In response to such a request, outbound and return availability displays are shown using the upper and lower terminal partitions. Outbound and return availability is displayed from a single entry using plus plus. If you require the same routing in reverse for the return, there is no need to add the routing after the plus plus, just add the return date. So in this example, we're looking for the 10th of October from Barcelona to Madrid on the outward sector, returning on the 15th of February. This now displays the availability for the 10th of February from Barcelona to Madrid on the upper partition and the availability for the 15th of February from Madrid to Barcelona on the lower partition. Each partition has the previous and next day date choices and the number of passengers. As the user selects the number of passengers on the outward journey, you'll see that the return leg alters accordingly. If you wish to display a specific carrier on both the outbound and return sectors, you would need to add this into the entry after each leg. So in this example, we're looking at the 1st of August from Athens to Paris with Air France, returning the 15th of August with Air France. If you were only to add this to the very end of the entry, it would only search for the specific carrier on the return. Another way of searching for availability is by using the Air Availability Search option via Search from the toolbar. A fill-in format will be presented which is simply completed with the search criteria. It will automatically pre-populate with whatever was the last city pair searched for. This can be overtyped with your new criteria. Round trip or one-way routings would be specified here. You can either enter city codes or the city name. So if we wanted to search from New York, you'll see that the option appears in the list. To populate this, we hit enter. We can then tab to the destination, which in this case we'll enter as Rio. Alternatively, you can use the mouse to choose from the options listed. To enter dates, either over type or use the calendar. Preferred departure times can also be selected. Let's choose our return date. You can also specify a particular airline. Type in the airline code and from here passenger numbers can also be selected. We can even enter the preferred booking class code. The results returned will show only the booking class code requested. When all requirements have been entered, you can then click on search. There is yet another option for searching for availability via the calendar, which is accessed via the Tools option of the toolbar. Once calendar has been selected, you can then scroll down to see the other months. It will show the maximum amount of months permissible to book in advance. Alternatively, you can also expand the calendar by clicking on the edge of the calendar and dragging so that you can see multiple months without the need to scroll. There is an option that can be ticked to have the calendar open on startup so that when you log on the calendar automatically appears. Click on the required outbound date. If a return date is required, now click on that and the duration of the trip will now be highlighted. You can then right hand click to obtain the context sensitive menu. There are two options relevant here, either availability or last air. In this example, we will have a look at availability. Again, the fill in format is now presented with the dates pre-populated. The routing will pre-populate with whatever the last routing searched for was. However, this can be overtyped with the city name or code that is now required. We'll now take a look at Rome. Our required city is shown at the bottom of the list. I hit enter to populate and we're going to look at a flight to Milan. 
This time we'll search for a preferred time of 0800 hours on the outbound and 1700 hours on the return. And we'll look at the airline Alitalia. We'll leave the passengers as one in this case and we won't enter a preferred booking code. We can now click on search. If what is required is to look at different dates for the same last routing searched for, again we would go to Tool, select Calendar, choose our alternative date, and again right hand click to access the context sensitive menu. This time we will choose Last Air. This will apply the new date range to that same routing and present the relevant availability display. So we can now see our outbound departure for the 7th of July on the upper partition and the return for the 14th of July on the lower partition. A point to note here is that if the last routing looked at was a one way and a date range has now been selected, the results will not present the return availability. This will only happen if the last availability looked at was a return trip. Don't forget that both the air availability and calendar can also be accessed by clicking on the quick commands option.